Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In the previous class, we have discussed one of the important topic that is endosperm. In this class, we are going to discuss about the embryo. You know that this embryo, so this embryo it is the young sporophytic plant present within the seed. You may be knowing that after fertilization, the ovule develops into seed and zygote develops into embryo. That's why I am saying here this embryo, it is the young sporophytic plant present within the seed. Then why it is called as young sporophytic plant? You may be studied in the plant kingdom where when you study the life cycles, uh, if you take the example any life cycle, the zygote develops into embryo, later embryo develops into sporophytic plant. That's why, so this embryo can be considered as the end sporophytic plant. Or else, we can also consider this embryo as the rudimentary plant. What is meant by rudimentary? It is nothing but the immature plant present within the seed is called as embryo. Then where this embryo is situated? When you absorb the embryo sac, this embryo is present towards the micropylar end where the zygote is situated. Because I told you many times where the, uh, the zygote only develops into embryo, which means zygote is situated towards the micropylar end, then the embryo is also situated towards the micropylar end where the zygote is situated. Then how this embryo will be formed? You know that after fertilization, after fertilization, the zygote which is present at the micropylar end which undergoes a period of rest, then it divides to form embryo. Initially, the zygote in the resting stage, later it divides to form embryo. But very importantly, most of the zygotes, most of the zygotes, they divides only after the formation of certain amount of endosperm. What is endosperm? It is the nutritive tissue which helps in nourishing the developing embryo. As embryo requires nourishment, only after the formation of certain amount of endosperm, this zygote will start to divide, then it will form the embryo. So this is very very important, only after the formation of endosperm, the zygote will divide to form embryo. So this we can say uh, it is an adaptation. So why zygote divides only after the formation of endosperm? It is an adaptation as the embryo requires nourishment from the endosperm. And the process of formation of or the process of formation of embryo from the zygote is called as embryogeny. The process of formation of embryo from the zygote is called as embryogeny. And here we can, uh, we can, we know that there are different types of seeds uh, like monocot seeds and dicot seeds. Uh, though the seeds differ greatly, the seeds may be different. The monocot and dicots will be, uh, dicot seeds will be different. But the early stages of embryo development is similar both in monocotyledons and dicotyledons that we will be studying later. First, let us understand the embryogeny in dicotyledons. You know, di refers to two, the seeds which contain two cotyledons are called as dicotyledons. And already I told you, embryogeny, it is the process of formation of embryo from the zygote. Let us understand the embryogeny in case of dicotyledons. See, this is the zygote which is present at the micropylar end of the embryo sac. In a typical dicot, in a typical dicot, this zygote will elongate. First, the zygote will elongate and then divides by a transverse wall. The zygote first elongates and divides by a transverse wall to form two unequal cells. Here you can observe there are two unequal cells in the, the basal larger cell is called as a suspensor cell. The basal larger cell is called as suspensor cell and the smaller terminal cell is called as embryonal cell. All this information is very very important. Initially the zygote elongates and divides by a transverse wall resulting in the two unequal cells. The basal larger cell is called as suspensor cell and the smaller terminal cell is called as embryo cell. Later, this suspensor cell, this suspensor cell will undergo transverse division few more times. Again, the suspensor will divide it transversely, resulting in the formation of a 6 to 10 cells of a filamentous suspensor. 
cylinder sorry suspension so this is a filamentous like structure which may contain 6 to 10 cells it is called as a suspensor here i got only suspensor cell because it gives rise to suspensor then how suspensor will be formed this suspensor cell will divide it transversely few more times and resulting in a filamentous suspensor including 6 to 10 cells then what is the importance of this suspensor this is suspensor it helps in pushing the embryo into the endosperm you may be knowing that if this is the embryo around the embryo the endosperm will be present that is the nutritive tissue so this suspensor helps in pushing the embryo into the endosperm in order to obtain the nourishment so this is about the suspensor later so this suspensor sir when you observe this suspensor the first cell of the suspensor, this is, here only you can see, this is the first cell of the suspensor and this first cell of the suspensor towards the micropylar region. It becomes swollen. It becomes swollen and it functions as a astorium. You may be studied in case of uh, parasitic plants, uh, astorium. What is the function of astorium? It helps in penetrating into the tissues. Similarly, this first cell or basal cell towards the micropylar region, it functions as a astorial cell. And you can observe the difference. So the basal cell only, basal cell only, swollen cell and functions as a astorial cell. And the last cell, the last cell of the suspensor at the end and towards the embryo. This is the embryo very near to or adjacent to the embryo is called as hypophysis. The first cell of the suspensor is called as a astorial cell because it is a swollen one and the last cell of the suspensor is called as hypophysis and very importantly this hypophysis later develops into uh, root uh, or we can say that it is a radical and root tip radical and root cap so this hypophysis only develops into the radical and root cap that we can able to study later so try to understand the last cell functions uh, last cell becomes a hypophysis and this hypophysis later develops into radical and root cap so this is about suspensor then this embryo cell so this is the embryo cell this embryo will divide or will undergo divisions it undergoes two vertical divisions and one transverse division resulting in the formation of eight cells which are arranged into two tires. Here you can see there are two tires. It is the outer tire and inner tire. So this stage we can call it as an octant stage. As the embryo contains eight cells, the embryo cell divides uh, which undergo two vertical divisions and one transverse division resulting in the formation of eight cells uh, which are arranged into two tires. So this outer tire of cells are called as epibasal cells and inner tire of cells are called as hypobasal cells. Then this hypobasal cell, the hypobasal cells, uh, the terminal cells. So these hypobasal cells later develops into two cotyledons and plumule as we are discussing the dicots in a dicots the epibasal cell later gives rise to two cotyledons and plumule and this hypobasal cell the hypobasal cell that is very near to the suspensor later develops into hypocotyl So try to remember the AP basal cell, the terminal cells later gives rise to two cotyledons and plumule, whereas the hypo basal cells, which are very near to suspensor, they develop into hypocotyl. Then, so this the eight embryonic cells, the eight embryonic cells are octants. Later, they undergo periclinal divisions. So periclinal in the sense towards the uh, periphery, the periphery, only towards the periphery the divisions will be taking place. Uh, this octants will undergo periclinal divisions and resulting in the formation of a outer layer of cells called as dermatogen can also be called as a protoderm. The outer layer of cells are called as a protoderm or dermatogen and this 
in the mass of cells are differentiated into prokaryotic and the middle layer is called as ground meristem so this is uh, the global ostrich embryo i will discuss later here we can see the ostrial cell the basal swollen cell of the suspensor is called as ostrial cell and the remaining cells are called as suspensor whereas uh, the last cell is called as a hypophysis and this hypophysis later develops into root tip nothing but the radical and also root cap whereas this embryo consists of outer layer of cells called as a dermatogen and inner mass of cells are differentiated into prokaryotic and middle layer of cells is called as ground meristem and the early stages of embryo development includes a series of cells and all these stages we can call it as a pro embryo the pro embryo consists of a series of cells which later helps in formation of embryo that is before formation of embryo we can call it as a pro embryo later this pro embryo eventually transfers into a globular embryo so this is the globular embryo where we can find the presence of layers of cells later this globular embryo becomes a heart shaped embryo and this mr shaped embryo finally it is transferred into a mature embryo this mature embryo consists of the plumule a radical and two cotyledons so this is a embryogeny in dicotyledons so the first zygote elongates it will form two unequal cells the smaller the smaller cell is called as embryonal cell that is towards the chelacer end you can say and towards the micropylar end the larger basal cell is called suspensor cell this suspensor cell will divides transversely few more time few more time to form 6 to 6 uh, to 10 a filamentous suspensor later the basal cell the first cell of the suspensor is called as ostrial cell and the last cell of the suspensor is called as hypophysis this hypophysis later develops into radical and root cap and this embryo cell will undergo two vertical divisions and one transverse division resulting in the formation of eight cells which are arranged in two tiers the outer tier of cells called as epibasal cells and inner tier of cells called as hypobasal cells so the epibasal cells later gives rise to two cotyledons and plumule even the epicotyle and the hypobasal cells towards the suspensor they gives rise to hypocotyle and this uh, octant will undergo periclinal divisions periclinal divisions and helps in formation of the outer layer of cells called as dermatogen and inner mass of cells called prokaryotic and the middle layer is called as a ground meristem at this stage of embryo we can call it as a globular embryo later this globular embryo becomes heart shaped embryo and finally it becomes a, a mature embryo with a plumule a radical and two cotyledons now we will discuss the structure of a typical dicotyledonous embryo so this is so this diagram i am making here so this is the structure of a typical dicot embryo example we are taking is bean so when you observe the bean embryo it will be like this and this is the structure of typical dicot embryo let us understand a typical dicot embryo consists of two important regions so this region we can call it as a embryonal axis so this portion is called as embryonal axis and these two are the cotyledons a typical dicot embryo consists of an embryonal axis and two cotyledons and the embryonal axis the embryonal axis above the level of cotyledons or as we can say very near to cotyledons this is the embryonal axis the region or portion above the level of cotyledons is called as epicotyle so it is mentioned above the level of cotyledons we can understand it is very near to cotyledons is called as epicotyle and this epicotyle ends or terminates with the stem tip stem tip with end folded leaves called as plumule so this is the part this is the region called as a plumule the epicotyle ends with the stem tip called as plumule this plumule is nothing but future shoot so what the shoot you can observe later that future shoot will be formed from the plumule hence plumule can be called as a future 
sure and the cylindrical portion of the axis that is below the level of cotyledons so below the level of cotyledons it is called as hypocotyl try to remember the embryonal axis the region above the level of cotyledons is called epicotyl and the portion below the level of cotyledons is called as hypocotyl hypocotyl and this hypocotyl ends with the root tip called radical the root tip called as radical try to remember so this hypocotyl ends with the root tip called as radical and this root tip is covered with the root cap so this is about the structure of typical dicot embryo it is very very simple you can remember better the typical dicot embryo consists of two parts the embryonal axis and two cotyledons the region the region of embryonal axis above the level of cotyledons is called epicotyl and epicotyl ends with the stem tip called as a plumule and the region below the level of cotyledons is called hypocotyl and this hypocotyl terminates at the root tip called as radical and this root tip is covered by a root cap that completes the structure of dicot embryo in the next class we will be discussing about the monocotyledonous embryo embryogeny in monocot embryo and the structure of typical monocot embryo that we can discuss in the next class